Mr. Speaker, <clears throat> I yield myself five minutes. Gentlelady is recognized. Mr. Speaker, in healthcare professions, we know that children are not just little adults. They have unique health experiences, treatment needs, and research challenges. And while public long way on pediatric diseases over the years, we also know that we are still far behind on important diagnosis, diagnostics, cures, and treatments for far too many ailing children. And that's why I am so pleased to have co-authored the National Pediatric Research Network Act with my colleague and friend, Representative Kathy McMorris-Rogers. This bipartisan bill would improve research and clinical trials on pediatric diseases. It would train future pediatric researchers and disseminate research findings so quickly so that all children may benefit. It does not replace our current pediatric research investments. Instead, it builds upon the work already being done at the NIH and at research centers across the country by creating, as Chairman Upton said, research consortia to form a nationwide network of pediatric researchers. This is important so that we can make sure that we are always working with the most current science and that information is shared and also verified. And it will expand the geographic scope of research, giving sick kids easier access to uh, research programs and clinical trials. Moreover, this bill will help a wider variety of institutions participating in this critical research while providing training grounds for our next generation of pediatric re researchers. Another feature to this bill, a key feature to this bill is that it will place an added emphasis on researching children's rare diseases, such as the one already described, spinal muscular atrophy, and to develop new treatments to fight them. The low prevalence of these diseases makes them particularly hard to research. And yet these diseases have such a marked impact on the lives of far too many families and also communities. The National Pediatric Research Network Act will be an important step forward to help these families and those who may develop these diseases long into the future. So I want to thank again the leadership of the ENC Committee, Energy and Commerce, Chairman Upton, Ranking Member Waxman, Chairman Pitts, and Ranking Member Pallone for their dedication to this bill, and to the staff, my staff and especially Ruth Katz, committee staff, for working to improve the language and to bring this to the floor. My colleague, Congresswoman DeGette, for her leadership on this issue over the years. And just like Chairman Upton, I would especially like to thank my constituents, dear friends, and a very a remarkable family, Bill and Victoria Strong, who are the parents, for their tireless work on behalf of their own daughter, Gwendolyn, who has spinal muscular atrophy as well, and just a few weeks ago celebrated um, with an amazing achievement, entering public kindergarten at the age of five. Uh, she's the favorite of all of her classmates, and the parents are beside themselves with joy that this remarkable um, milestone has been achieved. And they, they work day to day, day in and day out, to make their daughter's world uh, better. And in doing so, they have created a very strong community within our larger community of people who care, uh, care about Gwendolyn, but also care about other children with similar kind of conditions and what we should be doing as a nation to stand with them. They have shown how entire communities can come together to fight diseases like SMA. So I urge my colleagues to follow their example. We need to come together now uh, to support this bill. And in doing so, we support families like those in Michigan and in Santa Barbara, California, and other places as well, to do all we can do to make this a law and give them hope and courage for the future. Um, Mr. Speaker, I reserve the balance of my time.